In this lesson, we're going to take a look at some of the more common vector data formats. So here we have four of the more common vector formats. GML stands for Geography Markup Language, and it was created by the Open Geospatial Consortium as a way to encode geographical data in an XML format. KML stands for Keyhole Markup Language, and it too is a variant of XML. This language was originally created by Keyhole Incorporated for use with their Earth mapping software, which you'll know today as Google Earth. GeoJSON is a geographical specific version of JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. And Esri shapefiles are a binary format for storing vector data created by Esri, the makers of ArcGIS. Of these four formats, GML, KML, and GeoJSON all work natively with open layers. However, Esri shapefiles are not handled natively by open layers and must be converted to one of the other formats before we can use them. Let's take a quick look at what GML, KML, and GeoJSON look like. So we're going to start with GeoJSON, and this should look fairly familiar to you. It's simply JavaScript, or JavaScript object notation. But as you can see, the attributes in here are all geographical. This format is quite compact, and a lot of people prefer this format simply because OpenLayers is a JavaScript library, and this uses JavaScript notation. Here's an example of GML. As it's an XML variant, it is a little more bloated than the GeoJSON. However, GML can represent practically any geospatial data that you need to, which is exactly why it was created. This simple example simply shows a line string, but you can place almost anything in a GML file, such as a boat, a road, a tree, a building, you name it, GML can handle it. KML, since it was originally created for what would eventually become Google Earth, is slanted more towards presentation than GML, which is mainly for the transport of geographical information. KML allows you to define styles and assign those to the features in your dataset. Over time, you may develop a preference for one or more of these formats. They all have their pros and cons, and some are more useful at certain times than others. Fortunately, OpenLayers is not only flexible enough to accept these formats natively, it also supplies an excellent array of examples, so you can get started with the format of your choice quickly and easily. So here's one of the OpenLayers examples. This one is for working with GeoJSON. Not only do you get to see a working map with each one of these examples, but you also get to see exactly how all of these things are done by viewing the source. We'll revisit this example page in the next module, where we're going to look at some of the more advanced options available in OpenLayers, and also add one of the cooler features to our Catch the Hacker game.